Hey there, what you're looking at in front of me is the Acer Aspire 3, one of the most popular laptop models in the world. And unfortunately, the version that I have here is not exactly spectacular. See, this is rocking the Ryzen 3 7320U. And well, this is and well, this is a four-core, eight-thread Zen 2-based processor. So while it's a relatively recent release, it's really based off of hardware that is quite a few years old but it's still great performance and really at the price point that it's at it's a great value the downside is is that the configuration that i got came with eight gigabytes of ram and it's soldered memory and it's soldered memory so what that means is that it is non-upgradable and the thing is is that when using windows that can be kind of a problem and so i've had this laptop for a while and i've decided that i'm just going to install linux on it i've been daily driving a Linux laptop for about two years now and it's been an absolutely great experience and I've found that Linux works the best when all you're really doing is basic computer tasks so think watching YouTube browsing the internet pretty much if you live in a browser Linux is a great experience because the operating system just gets out of the way there's no pop-ups to tell you that you need to do this update or that you need to buy this service or that there's this feature feature related to Xbox. You get none of that showing up. You don't need to configure anything. It just works. So I'm going to install MX Linux on here. Normally I tend to use Nabara, but I have found that the most recent release of Nabara can be a little heavy on some of these lower end systems. And I've really been enjoying messing around with MX Linux. So this is going to be MX Linux with KDE Plasma as the inter as essentially the launcher of the computer. So I'm going to run through the installation process of all that all right so here i am booting up into the live disc for mx and this is mx 23.6 so i'm going to get that installed on here and we're going to jump on into the capture card so that we can look directly at what we're doing on the system all right so here we are in the post install screen and just sitting here we're seeing a 30 percent memory utilization it's not too bad really considering that on windows it was already more than 50% utilization just sitting in the desktop doing nothing. This is pretty rock solid. Now I did already go through the effort of setting up Firefox exactly how I want it, which is with uBlock Origin and Privacy Badger installed. We head on over to YouTube. Good lord, default YouTube is awful. All right, I want to see what memory utilization will be at if we start watching something on YouTube. Oh, there's this really great channel that I found recently called The Silicon Fox. He's got some fantastic videos, but he's a, a pretty tiny channel, really. He has less than a thousand subscribers, but he makes some great, great videos. I'll link them down below. Check him out. He's actually almost at a thousand. So if you want to help somebody out that makes some high quality videos, definitely check them out. Let's see. He's playing back at 4K. Bring up the stats for nerds and memory utilization at about 45% at most. So again, using a web browser and and watching a video already still not using more memory than Windows was just existing on the desktop doing nothing. But let's try out some different programs. All right, so I'm installing the flat pack right now for Moonlight. And the reason that I'm going to be using Moonlight is because with that, I'm able to do something really nice with my main computer. All right, so Moonlight has finished installing. Let's get that thing open. Now with having Moonlight installed, what I'm able to do essentially is stream my main desktop over my network to this system of course i can configure it in the settings at what resolution it's going to come in at i want it to be 1080p 60 fps is fine since that's the refresh rate of this display anyway i'm going to bump up the bit rate i'll do 61 i have wi-fi 6 at home so it's one of those things where the bit rate is not really going to be a problem even if i am on wi-fi i'm going to disable v Sync, enable frame pacing and i'm gonna i'm gonna show performance stats and all right let's see now the great thing about what i'm doing is that instead of just using sunshine which is what most people will typically end up using for in-home streaming
streaming, I'm using Apollo, which is a fork of it that has a virtual desktop option. And this is great because my main PC has a 1440p ultra wide display. This is just a 1080p 16 by 9 display. So I would have to change the resolution on my main desktop to 1080p so that I can stream it properly over here. That's kind of annoying. This essentially sets up a virtual display and that virtual display will be at the resolution that I set moonlight to stream at. So here you can see that this is a virtual display that is running on my desktop over there. And this is streaming all over the Wi-Fi. You can see on the screen there the stats that let you know what it's all streaming at. But here I have Steam open on the system now and uh, let's just jump on into I uh, will do Spider-Man remaster. Either way it's a title that just realistically would not run on this laptop. And well just just like that, here we are in Spider-Man, and it is at a locked 60 FPS, obviously because that's the refresh rate of the display on this laptop, so there's really no reason to waste the resources on anything else. And since this is also at 1080p, that means the GPU itself is not really working all that hard. And that's really the big benefit of using Apollo over Sunshine, is that because Apollo has this virtual display, you can essentially set it to whatever the resolution of your device that you're going to be streaming to is instead of you know just using whatever is the default of your pc because let's say you have a 4k display and you're going to be streaming to a device that has a 1080p display well why run the game at a 4k resolution if it's not really going to be displayed at that you could just run it at 1080p and it'll perform really really well on your system and your system's not even really going to have to use that much power especially if you're gonna just lock it to the refresh rate of your display anyway then it's pretty much a perfect experience but as you can see here we're having absolutely no issues whatsoever with this streaming and this is over wi-fi again i do have wi-fi 6 at home it might be a different situation for you if you have an older wi-fi setup i will say though wi-fi 6 devices are just so cheap nowadays that i would really consider upgrading your home network we all I'll rely on so many wireless devices that I think it's a worthwhile upgrade to make. And really, Moonlight is one of those features that I like the most in a Linux system because of the fact that it lets me just hook up to my main desktop and I can do whatever it is that I needed to do on there, while the laptop itself is again just getting out of the way. It's not really bothering me in any capacity and that's what I want out of a device more than anything nowadays. Everything just seems to nag you about everything. and it's it's nice to just have devices that at most will be like, hey, there's an update and that's it. That's all it'll tell you. It won't force it onto you. It won't bring up a pop up. It won't just suddenly restart things when you're just not paying attention. It is the most ideal way for me to use a computer. Now that might be a different scenario for you or for your family members. Again, I do think that the auto updating is probably better for most people than not. I think a lot of people have not earned the responsibility of being able to control their own updates but me as a tech guy i feel differently and so that's why i take matters into my own hands there and look i could run a bunch of different benchmarks on here to show the level of performance that it has but you saw youtube working and that's about all i really need this thing to do open up a web browser go on to reddit go on to youtube go on to facebook that's about all this needs to do and it'll do that and i now don't don't need to worry about all the other crap that windows does in the background so this thing as far as i'm concerned at this point is perfect the eight gigabytes of ram is not an issue for what i need this thing to do i'm of course going to use this thing a bit long term just to see what the battery life is going to be like and once it's done this thing is essentially going to be going to a friend of mine and i want to see what her experience is going to be like using linux because she just needs a computer that can essentially open up a web browser and do very basic tasks and well with that being the case i think that this is the 
prime candidate, but I didn't want to put her on Windows. So she's going to try out Linux. If she has no issues with it, then perfectly fine. She can keep this thing. If not, then we're going to have to find out another solution. But let me know what you guys think. What distro do you prefer to put onto systems with low amounts of memory like this? I think MX Linux is really my favorite, but I'm curious to see what other people's opinions are. I used to be a huge puppy Linux guy. I'm talking back in like 2010 era. That's when I was installing puppy Linux on systems. And I kind of just fell out of the whole Linux space for a while due to just the fact that it was really such an uh, incomplete experience back then. Things have definitely changed dramatically because the fact that I've been daily driving two Linux systems alongside a Windows main PC, mind you. But the fact that I've been daily driving two Linux systems for this long is really impressive because every time I was installing Puppy on a system, it was really mostly just to see what I can get it to run. You know, it would just be messing with these ancient systems, trying to install anything on there to see if a web browser would function. And while well, MX has kind of just become that for me, though I don't mess with systems that are that old anymore, and uh, I kind of miss it, honestly. It's funny, I've been tinkering around with tech for so long, and for the vast majority of it, I've just it's not been on YouTube or anything like that. It's just been me messing around for with it just for the love of the game. It's funny to think how long it's been. But anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.